blood and gut stuff. It's all the rage. The magazines and periodicals are full of it. Violence and seduction on every page? Well, read Shakespeare. Read history. Read the newspaper. It is getting late. Perhaps it is best if we pursue this at some other time. Oh, no. I want to know what you think, Professor. Bloody good stuff. What do you think the girl wants to hear? If I have noticed nothing else about you this much, I have noticed that you are unique. Something we should try not to forget. I think you could do better. Better? But who are you anyway? An aging German professor close to 50? I'm 34. 34? Really? Well, you look a lot older. I worry a lot. Then just what do you worry about? How to avoid a conversation such as this. Now we'll go to dinner. Miss March, since you've been here, six weeks now, is it? You shout, you rant, you upset the whole world of this boarding house. I am a serene and peaceful man. You're aloof! You're arrogant! Arrogant! Miss March, I spoke my language, you spoke yours. Obviously, it was not appreciated on either side. Obviously! My story is a great success in Concord.
What care I for prison? <laughs> Joe is an incredible human being. Look, it's Mr. Morris. He's standing at the window, glaring out. He looks sinister. I think he looks sad. Well, I wouldn't be sad living in such a house. Has anyone ever been inside? He'd never let any of us in. They say he's a very angry and bitter man. Joe's going to get us all into deathly trouble. Oh, well, they know this. The family with the criminal sister. What criminal sister? Oh, really? Oh. What's happening here? Joe's written an operatic tragedy. And she's by all the comfort becomes the us performance. And I'm the mother in it. And I die in it. But it's a beautiful death. And I play Clarissa, who's very sweet. It sounds wonderful. Oh, Marnie, it's Joe's best. Tell us about your day. Well, we needed socks and blankets for the Soldiers Aid Society. And a letter came from Father. A letter from Father! Read it to us, Marmy. Where's Joe? She's outside. Read the letter, Marmy. We'll wait for Joe. Well, she may be ours. I want to hear all the things you did today. I made to Dr. Chuck, that did you mercifully at school today? I was so humiliated. Rodrigo has returned! Joe! Oh, Marmy! Where did you get that tree? Oh, I borrowed it from Mr. Lawrence. And Joe, you did it. Mommy, I took it for us. Well, take it back immediately. Take it back? Well, that's like bringing back a chicken once you chopped off his head. Oh, do let us keep it. It's Christmas, Marmy. No, destroying someone else's property is. Give it to the Hummels. They have so little. Good. The tree goes to the Hummels then. Now, what about Mr. Lawrence? What about him? Mr. Lawrence? Yes, Mr. Lawrence. You! Me? You cut down my perfect Douglas fur. I should have you arrested. Oh, I'll make it up to you, sir. With what? I'll play it six more. Twelve! And chop to your firewood for a few days. Weeks! And I should hope that such an incident never occurs again. You've ruined my day. <laughs> he loves his trees. I'm Theodore Lawrence III, but everyone calls me Lori. <coughs> I've come to live here in Concord. I play the piccolo. I can sleep standing up. And I once won a medal in school for holding my breath nearly three minutes before passing out. I think it was terrifically brave of you chopping down grandfather's tree. Well, goodbye. About Theodore Lawrence the third, would you mind delivering this tree to the Hummels? Joe, I don't mind. He doesn't mind. Just walking the direction. They live half a mile down the road, the red house with the broken shingles. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Joe, you must think before you act on every whim. I just want us all to have a wonderful Christmas, Marnie. The letters come from Father. Oh, Christopher Columbus! Do read the letter, Marnie. My dear wife, the war goes on and on. The end seems nowhere in sight. The days are difficult and long, but I know. He's loud. Still, it is very lonely here for my dear ones, especially lonely as Christmas is approaching.
Do you know the hour? Almost ten, I believe. Your work day begins with me at nine. <coughs> You've missed reading to me. And still haven't repaired the latch on the cellar door. Oh, I got delayed finding you this beautiful flower. Don't trifle with me, Josephine. You were dawdling. I wasn't dawdling. I was writing a story. You are what happens to a girl when she has no father. I have a father. Never here when you need him. And now my nephew has the audacity to be an army chaplain when he can't even support his own family. Josephine, listen to me. You are on the verge of womanhood. The first of the Columbus. And yet you go about writing senseless stories, constantly trying to save the world, when you can't even save yourself. I don't need saving. There are many pitfalls a girl can fall into. And you, Josephine, are headed towards all of them. I want to see you shine. Even if you're not rich, you can at least marry well. Oh, I'll never marry. You'll marry. All girls marry. Well, I'm not all girls. With a good marriage, you can have power. You can take your place in society. I don't give two things about society. Then there's no point in having this conversation. It's clear to me I could never take you to Europe? Take me to Europe? It was an idle thought of mine. Do you know how important it is for a writer to travel? It's been my dream, Aunt Marge. We earn our dreams in this world, Josephine. It's foolish of me to think you could ever change your ways.
think my two oldest girls are attending their first ball. Next year, it'll be you, Beth. Me? Think so? Meg? I can't go. Meg, why not? Look at me. Every girl in Concord my age has been to a ball. This is the very first time I've even worn a dress like this. Anything like this. I wore that very same dress to my first ball. But it didn't look half so good on me. Margaret March, you've been dreaming of Annie Moffat St. Valentine's Day ball for months. You can't walk away from it now. I'm not built for gowns. You look very alluring. I think the word is alarming, Marnie. Look at Meg, she's the beauty. She'll be the most soft of girl at the ball. She doesn't want to go. Meg, what will I do when someone asks me to dance? Just smile and say, I be delighted.
Mr. Brook, how are you? father will be here. He wanted you to meet some important people. I have. These are the Morrises I wanted to introduce you to. This is Meg, right? Yes. And this is Jo. She cuts our fire on occasion. <laughs> this is Mr. John Brook. He's a scholar from Boston. I'm Lori Tudor. Come, Lori. Sir! You've taken my gloves. Oh, I think you're. Sorry. <laughs> So, you're Margaret March? Yes, I am. It's a splendid party, isn't it? Yes, it is. Quite lovely. So, you're from Boston. Maine, actually. I've never been to Maine. You should go. It's a beautiful country. Very... Primitive. I like primitive. Really? Mr. Brook is a romantic. Is that true? Well, no, no. I read Sheets and Kelly. I mean, Keats and Shelley. So do I. You read Keats and Shelley? All the time. Christopher Columbus. Would you like to dance, Miss March? Oh, Meg, you're about to join the ladies in the I'd floor. be delighted, Mr. Brook. Excuse us, Joe. So tell me, when you're not attending balls, what is it that you do? Oh, I, I write bloody love stories. I make extraordinary plans. I'm going to Europe. I'm going to meet famous writers and revolutionaries. So what about you? What do you do? Marmy tells me you're all alone in the world. No mother or father. That must be so sad. It must be terrible. It must be awful. It's not awful. I've got a cranky old grandfather. And I've got a cat. And I've got... What? Well, I was hoping to say you. Me? You don't have me. I know I have no right, but sometimes late at night, I watch you in an attic, pacing back and forth like a maniac. I've never met a girl like you. Such a lovely party, the music is so thrilling. It makes a person feel like dancing. I'm very good. I want a medal for dancing at school. I don't dance. Besides, I've got a patch on the back of my dress. A patch? Let me see. No, no! I like it. That patch was in a whole new fashion. You dance with me tonight, I guarantee by next week, every girl in Congo is going to be wearing a patch on the back of her dress. Cool.
child, Joan. She's not just a child. She's a demon in a child's body. If I could bring your story back, I would. My writing is everything to me, Marty. It's who I am. It's my future. It's my passion. That passion is still in you, Joan. Believe me, it's still there. I'll never forgive her. You're not wrong, Joe, to feel anger. But if you build a wall between you and Amy, the one person you may end up hurting is yourself. And I couldn't bear that. Try and get some sleep. Together and 
for the master. While we wait for we'll the for the folk along the parapets. I swear I'll follow you like royalty. Come on, you're royalty. 
pity for Joe. Well, tell me I'm doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. I've never left my girls before. Your husband doesn't know you and he needs you working in Washington. I feel like I'm being torn in two. One part of me here. Well, look in on the girls have a free day. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. I'll just take this to the carriage. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, sir. Amy's almost ready. She's packing up half the house. Where's Joe? I sent her to Aunt Marge's hours ago. She should have been back by now. And my hair will grow back. 
And who is this man? He's Laurie's tutor. And a friend. Well, tell your friend his visit should be brief. Amy, collect your things. I'll be waiting for you in the carriage. I have plans for you. Yes, ma'am. John, what have you done? I can listen. I can't stand by any longer. Your own father is in the Army Hospital in Washington. I have friends who will never return. When do you leave? Tonight. Then. Margaret. I'm not a rich man, and I'm not particularly handsome. You're very handsome, John. Thank you. I'm not the wisest man in the world. You're very wise. Thank you. <laughs> I love him. So 
until you love him? I'm talking about us. We're all alone. We only have our each other now. You can't turn your back on us. I'm not turning my back on you. I told you, I'm going to become a published writer. I know. And I'll give you all everything you've ever dreamed of. But if she loves him, Joe. I do. With all my heart and soul. I've lost Meg. I've lost Meg. I've lost my trip to Europe. You'll find your way there someday, Joe. You can do anything. You can make the clouds disappear. No. It's you who makes the clouds disappear. Come, walk with me and tell me about all your adventures. Well, I sold my hair. Yes.
We would like to announce the winner for our Jelly Bean Yesing contest, and the winner is Lauren Slater. Congratulations! Congratulations, Lauren and the Bees uh, in the lobby at the end of the performance to receive your shirt and jelly beans. That'd be great. Thank you all so much for guessing. The last winner will be announced during the intermission of our Sunday show. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, my God. 
$15 and $25 more for my commission. You are rich! I feel it! Do you dance, Professor? No. Neither do I. But today I could! <laughs> celebrate your success, Miss Marsh. Have you ever been to the Broadway Gardens? Are you asking me to dinner, Professor? No. <clears throat> yes. I should like that. Oh, Miss Marsh, I almost forgot in all this excitement a telegram came for you. More good news, I suspect? Open it, Miss Marsh. Oh, I will. Today I could start a revolution. <laughs> I could. What is it, Miss March? It is not for you. Dear Godwin, my sister Beth has contracted scarlet fever. She is gravely ill. I must go to her immediately. I'm sorry, dear. Sorry for you and your family. Is there anything we can do? Oh, no, thank you, Professor. Mrs. Kirk, tell your girls. They'll be fine. Tell them to keep reading. I will. Thank you both for everything. Miss March, I would like to accompany you. Accompany me? You should not travel alone. I traveled here alone. I'm not afraid. I shall be fine, but thank you. Miss March, you will be back. Of course I will. Hey, Miss March, feel good. Yes, I need good luck. Your simple acquaintance is leaving you, Professor. Yes. Cut! Get off, Mr. Felix! Please, off the sofa! <laughs> Treasure it. Play something for us, Beth. Sounds good. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I received a letter this morning from Lord. He had been in New York. Lord is in New York? Did he come to see you? No. Oh, I'm sorry, but he had been in such a bad way. It took me about a week. I insisted he do some business for me. And then go up to Europe to enjoy himself. And guess we met up with him in Florence. Who? Amy and your aunt March. Miss March, may I join you? With the honor, sir. If you say come with me off to Massachusetts, then to Massachusetts we will go. We will buy fishes there, maybe even two sets. Buy the finest china, then we'll dine on my own creatures. It's New York, I miss New York. Oh.
change the world. I too would like to change the world. Yes. Come again. 
excited about New York? It's a circus. A circus? Clowns, waltzing camels, dancing horses. Sometimes you see them right out in the street. In museums, in theaters, back everywhere. And the women, are they shameless? Some of them, anyway. It's an amazing place, Beth. And I'm going to take you there. To New York? And we'll dine in the best restaurants and see Shakespeare and ride the omnibus and mingle with those drink. So, I have something for you. Marty says this shell is over a thousand years old. There. And I believe that once upon a time it had an amazing life. If you hold it to your ear, it speaks to you. Well, what does it say? It says, we grow up too fast. You're a woman of the world now. I'm so proud of you. When you were first born, not an hour old, I told Marmee, Beth is mine. Everyone has someone special in the world, and I have you. My sweet Beth, give me a task.
shambles. May? Did you see the look I gave the coachman on March? His impertinence. He caught every bump on the road. One must always be civil to a coachman, Amy. We must respect those who have the reins until we wrench the reins from them. Yes, on March. Joe! Marnie! And remember, Amy, you're a lady now. Yes, I am a lady. Nick! One of his house gets so small. As we grow grand, Amy, the world around us often diminishes in size. I have once known people who have almost disappeared before my very eyes. You're such a dear old March. Thank you for everything. I'll go see to that wretched coachman. Remember on March. Respect those who have the reins. Very good. <laughs> Amy. Meg! 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 Let me look at you. You're so beautiful. You're a mother now. Twins! I can hardly believe it. Neither can I. <laughs>
I think that's how I go on. Oh, you're strong and wise. How can I be like you? How can I find your strength? Don't make so much of me, Joe. I never dreamed of this sorrow. I never thought I'd have a reason to lament. I hoped I'd never know heartbreak. How I wish I could change the way things went. I wanted nothing but good news. I wanted a reason to prevail. Not this
parlor and grumbled about her face. Next, the oldest and most romantic said, It's not fair. Some girls have pretty things while we have nothing. It won't be Christmas for that friend, said Amy, with her usual pout. We can have it without her father turning to us, said Joe, who yearned to travel and write great books. Only Beth, sitting contented, said, in a tone so sweet even angels would have listened. But we've got each other. Everything I promised them is here. All of us the way we used to be.
society arriving at any moment. I understand you want to talk to me. I suppose you realize this could have been your day. You think I made a ghastly mistake? I do not. Amy and Lori are ideally suited to each other. I've gone over my will. Uh oh, I'm Meg talking. will inherit most of my money. Amy is making her way in society and won't need anything. And as for you, I don't want I know to. you don't want anything. And yet you want everything. Josephine, every girl, every woman needs something to fall back on when times are bleak. I'm leaving you my house. Your house? Do something worthwhile with it. Make a library or a school. That's very generous of you. Thank you, Aunt March. <laughs> I don't like that dress. It was one of your old ones. Well, it looked better on me. <laughs> Joe. There's a strange man at the front gate asking for you. <laughs> Soon after you left, I bought a kite and took it to the boat. I never had a kite. You know, you were right to sink I was old. Oh, no. I was. I was old. But since we met, everything is different. Everybody knows. My students, even, they said, Professor Mayer, you're smiling to me. We have our differences. Daddy Blunt. Steve Blunt. By all means. I think perhaps it looks like rain.
When people discover passion, they come up on something better. This fervor they have in common will shelter them anywhere.